Hello everyone, Dr. John Bartham is here today with Functional Medicine Charlotte Partners, Brock and Amber, and they're here to share the story of transformation that their family has experienced. So um, guys, first of all, thank you for being here, but then secondly, why did you first seek out functional medicine care? Sure, thank you. Um, we first sought functional care because um, our son uh, had a seizure disorder and many other diagnoses. We had been the conventional medicine route for five years and no one could really tell us what exactly was wrong with our son nor why he wasn't getting better despite many medications. And we were really desperate for answers and um, Thankfully, we had friends that pointed us to functional medicine, and that's why we're here today. Excellent. So if we, if we dive in deeper there, like what, what, what were the things he was really suffering with, like um, symptomatology that was impacting not only him, but the family? So he had his initial seizure when he was about five years old. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, it just seemed to be a downward spiral. Uh, he had sleep issues. He was diagnosed with insomnia. Um, all within about a year's time frame, insomnia, uh, uh, sensory processing disorder, ADHD, uh, severe anxiety on top of the epilepsy. We would go from doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor, um, saw approximately 15 different doctors between our city here and uh, down uh, and we live in Ohio, so down uh, between Dayton and, and uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, we just felt like none of them were ever talking to each other. Um, all of them would just want to throw a medicine our way that would treat the symptom. But in the back of our minds, we'd always talk about something is amiss. Something, there's a rock that we have not overturned yet. Um, it just doesn't seem like this is the, the, the puzzle. Um, there just seemed like there's a missing piece of the puzzle. Um, and so like Amber said, we found actually a little girl in Brady's uh, uh, first grade class that, that her parents were chiropractors, became good friends with them pointing us in the direction of functional medicine. And uh, I think within our first 15 minute consultation with you, um, it's like you'd been on this journey with us for five years and uh, all light bulbs started to go off. We thought this is the route we definitely want to go. And uh, we're, we're, that was last uh, October of 2018, October, November, 2018. And we haven't looked back since. I'm very, very thankful and blessed we've gone down this path. Excellent. So, so you started down the path and how was the, functional medicine approach different from, from the 15 doctors you'd seen previously? Well, I think the, the biggest difference, which is actually what we have literally asked his doctor <clears throat> specialists in the past, but is to look at everything and how all of these different diagnoses or issues or um, hindrances in his life, how they all interacted with each other. Because um, up to this point, we not only were they not um, all considered, but we were told that they had no relation to each other, and um, which all which we never accepted. We never accepted, but also when you have doctors telling you, "No, you're wrong," you know, after a while, you you start to question yourself. But that was the biggest thing for us was truly looking at his health as a big picture, and that it does all. Um, it all interacts. It's all part of the story. We felt from day one, all they were doing is putting band-aids on these issues. And we kept saying to ourselves, okay, you can only put a band-aid on so long before the wound continues to get bigger and bigger. And we felt with each diagnosis, with each, almost every doctor visit, uh, we just felt like the wound was getting bigger. And uh, so we wanted to dive deeper into, into his whole life, basically, to figure out what exactly was happening with him inside of his body as opposed to just slapping a medication on and treating the symptoms that he was going through. At that point. Okay, so what, what, what did we discover when we did that detective work? We looked under his hood, we considered his entire history and his medical record review, and, and what, what did we find? Well, we found that um, recurring strep infections uh, were present in nearly all of the major milestone health events he had throughout his life, which a couple of times we weren't even aware that he had, that the doctors had found this or had even put notes in that. And um, <clears throat> by um, further digging, um, finally got a diagnosis of pandas. Mm -hmm. Which stands for? <laughs> I got this one. 
pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcal infection. Right. Mm -hmm. And had your pediatrician heard of that? Pediatrician had, had, I think had heard of it, but was not, had, had really signed up to it per well, se. Well, they, they, he had, he had no real knowledge of, right. of really what it was or what could be involved with it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the interesting point in this too is I think his last seizure was what December of last year. And I remember he had a bad seizure. We took him to the hospital and um, the, the hospital doctor came in and said he's had a seizure and was trying to explain to us what happens in the body when it, when it comes to seizures and stuff. And I was the one that voiced uh, that stood up and said, I want you to uh, swab his throat for us. Mm -hmm. And the doctor looked at me kind of weird and said, well, you know, no fever, um, no sore throat, lymph nodes aren't swollen. And I said, trust me, just for our peace of mind, if you would just please uh, swab his throat. And she came back in 10, 15 minutes after that, that swab. And she said, all right, dad, what do you know that I don't? Because he has strep. <laughs> and, uh, and you said, so was, was yeah, yeah. So, so great. And, and the, the point of that is a, if all the doctors, aren't addressing the whole person and the whole history in the medical record review, you may never find that. And then B, if you don't look for it, you're not going to find it. C, if you don't know to even look for it, you're not going to find it, right? right? So so then parents get told, oh, he'll grow out of it, or oh, let's just put him on some antidepressant or anti-anxiety medications. Like the kid's nine years old, we don't want to put him on that. Mm -hmm. um, and and so he was on five medications when you, when we first met. Um, so we found the pandas, we took action. And so what's happened? Well, now um, the, the first tangible thing is he has um, gone down from five medications, like you said, to only one. And that one is at a lower dose than what it originally was. Um, and we've seen just massive improvements in regards which was actually a really debilitating um, issue in his massive, life and family life. Excuse me, massive improvements in what? Sleep. Okay. Sleep. Um, also in his anxiety, which all but disappeared. Mm -hmm. um, and even other people in our life and his life have commented on how he's talking more, he's more communicative, his attention is better, and uh, just I'm trying to think, is there anything else, but he, GI his, function, his GI function. Yeah. It's, it's all that is improved. And, and I, I remember in your progress report, you wrote all caps, no more constipation, which was exactly. a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So how about seizures? He's not had any. Um, and so we're treating that also with a ketogenic diet, but we see no sign of his seizure disorder um, being an issue. He used to have what they call the shark eyes where his pupils would be rather enlarged. And uh, um, we make comments all the time, look how small his pupils are now and stuff. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's been really cool to see. And people that have gone even just a, you know, two or three weeks when we initially started this journey that hadn't seen Brady in, in a few weeks would say, Who, what happened? You know, he's, <laughs> he's a different person. He's a different kid and stuff. So. That's that's what just excited us even more. That is that is exciting, and and that's on the individual level. But then on the family level, uh, I know Amber, you've mentioned now that he's sleeping. It's been life changing for everybody. Oh. Yes, yes. When you get sleep, <laughs> everything. <laughs> Excellent. So thank you for sharing. Um, so one question I ask everybody is if if you're out talking to people. And they, they say, you know, you, you could show them these results and they may say, oh, functional medicine is expensive. I don't think I, I want to do that. And, and how would you respond to that? Well, statement? the biggest and maybe most obvious is you can't put a price tag on your health. Mm -hmm. But and, and I think any parent, especially, but any individual would say your health is 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 more important than any money in the world. But. Secondly, the amount of time and really money over the years that we spent in conventional medicine probably far exceeds what we ever would have paid Absolutely. had we started with functional medicine. Gotcha. So you're happy then? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely. Well, 
any other parting words of advice to people who are watching this and are maybe on the fence or or maybe like you have uh, are struggling with a potential pandas or pans or neuroautoimmune diagnosis? The one thing I'll say is to, to anybody watching this that um, you know your doctors have told you one thing, but you believe in your heart of hearts and something different. Um, doctors are just giving their best educated guess, you know, most of the time. Um, nobody's going to know your child like you do. Um, obviously, nobody's going ever going to care about your child like you are. So, if you have that um, initial uh, gut reaction that there is something missing, that you feel that you're not, you haven't overturned every single rock, keep digging and, and keep finding the answers. Um, exhaust yourself in it. You know that that's what um, I, I think that's what it's all about. Is is you want the best for your child, um, and, and you'll go to any extreme that you can possibly uh, go through to for your kid. So. Don't, uh, again, doctors will sometimes, they're, they're not perfect people, they're human beings, we all make mistakes, obviously, so um, just keep fighting, keep, keep trying to uh, find the answers that you're, you're striving to find, because um, they are out there. You just have to dig sometimes deeper and dig in different directions and areas that you maybe have never uh, uncovered before, so we're, we're thrilled to death, and uh, as I said earlier, this all started because one little girl in Brady's first grade class decided to be his friend, so. <laughs> we're, we're stoked about it that's great well brock and amber i just want to give you props publicly because um i think you would agree it's not necessarily easy initially to implement what needs to be done right. but once you do it and you do it consistently out of love you can change the life of your child and your entire family and you've done that so i publicly want to say i'm proud of you guys thank you so and much your, your great role models for the parents out there who are earlier in the journey than you are currently so um, keep being that light and thank you for sharing and uh, we'll talk soon.